Good evening and welcome to Nightline where we say there's something clean in the air. I'm Mary Sloan along with my daughter, Tony Suchko, and we have a great program lined up for you tonight. Guess what? We're here every Thursday night, aren't we, Tony? Every Thursday. We've been here almost three years, and every Thursday night you can tune in and watch Nightline Live with Mary and Tony. But tonight is a special night because it's what? It's Ladies, ladies Night. night. <laughs> <laughs> ladies Night. We call it The World Has The View, but we have a view. We have a vision in every woman. And I'm telling you, these ladies sitting at the table, they have a vision. And we all need a vision or we perish, don't we? I even have That's a vision right. at my age, hey. <laughs> So we have prayer partners back there tonight that's ready to take your call. And uh, we're going to pray at the end of the hour and agree with them. They're going to pray with you when you call. And uh, if you have a, a praise report you want to brag about, we like to brag about that too. So get on the phone and let us know. And, and hey, also tell about Facebook. go on Facebook, Nightline Live with Mary and Tony. Mm -hmm. And don't just stare but share, share. <laughs> thank you ladies <laughs> we want you to share the program on your facebook page because yes you know facebook has all these algorithms and the more that we share it the more that it opens Say that it word up again. <laughs> <laughs> it opens it up for more people to see you know what the lord is doing in different people's life um, so there's someone out there that may not live locally and can't watch it on TV, but they can watch it from anywhere in the world if you share it. And so you never know who can be touched and blessed um, if you just share it on and your Facebook page. tell them about page. our Facebook page too, Tony, how they can go on that and just like it. And Yes, go on and like it, Nightline Live with Mary and Tony. Um, you can also watch the show at WGGS TV on mm -hmm. Facebook as well. YouTube Live, on the website. But There's, when they go like our page, then every, uh, probably a couple days before Thursday night, you always start advertising. You yeah, know, so you know gonna who's going to be on each week. Yes. Um, and we just like to encourage you throughout the week through our page and kind of know what's going on as well. Yes. And different um, churches and different ministers that may be coming into town, we just kind of share that on there as well. So. Always good to have a, an outlet to be able to share different yeah, I just, things. I love all those Bible verses we put up from time to time to encourage people all through the week, too. So go like our page. Yes. You'll yes. like it. <laughs> now, I want to introduce our guest today. I've got some really special people here today that are special to my heart because they're all three really good friends of mine. Mm -hmm. So I want to introduce, first we have here Joanna Butler, very good Yay. friend of mine. I've known her for, I don't even know how, how old is Addison. She's 12, maybe about yeah. 11, 10, 11 mm -hmm. years. And uh, she's also um, co-pastors with her husband, Rich Butler, at Hope Church. So we're thankful that you're I'm here. I'm glad to be here. Thank you. And then next to her, we have someone who's no stranger to our viewers. You've been on several times, Logan Wolfram. Yes. So thank you for being back with us. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so you've been on a couple ladies' nights oh, in the, yeah. over the past few years with us and shared. And so I appreciate you coming yeah, back. Yeah, glad to be here. And so we have um, a newbie we're going to call her. <laughs> to, to, to Nightline is all it is. But Katie Mize. Hi, guys. Thanks for being here. Yes. So, asking me. I was like, this is so exciting to have all three of you. And not only is it a special night because it's ladies' night and I've got my friends here, but it's also Logan's birthday. Oh, yes, girl. Yay. Yay. 41. So, we want to just side sing to you. Oh, happy birthday <laughs> to Logan. Thank you. Happy, happy birthday, birthday to you. Oh, you brought me cake. You. <laughs> you, know <what> you, <laughs> you know what I had is I turned 41 this morning? A diet bar. Oh, so oh, I'm going to let you oh. blow that little <laughs> candle out. I'm going to take a picture of you. <laughs> it's so, so pretty. pretty. I stuck my finger in it. Tony said she was getting well a cake. Done. I thought it was about well this done. big. <laughs> can, they, can they see how pretty it is? They need to do a little yeah. zoom up there. Oh, Lena. don't let it fall off the <laughs> It looks like a flower. <laughs> yeah, keep holding it up till they it get looks. in there. There you go. Thank it you. Tastes, it tastes delicious oh, also. Tony, that's cute. Buttercream. Oh, oh, yeah. So that's <laughs> been in my, I got it Monday, and mm. Addison has been, Mommy, who's that cake for? 
I said, that's for Miss Logan. Her birthday Listen, is going to be in a couple days. We'll share some with you. And she was like, it. can you send a slice home? I was like, no, oh, it's not <laughs> yours. <laughs> so anyway. That's a cupcake, I believe. It's really pretty. I know. I was like, that's I a cupcake. And I tell myself it's a cupcake, so yes. you, when you eat the whole thing, you feel like. And I have a couple, a couple, a couple little extra chocolate, strawberry, and vanilla pedophores for you as well. So oh, you can um, you. take those. So I thought that's a perfect little special. size. Maybe when we uh, go to a song, we can maybe cut a couple little we pieces. We probably can do that. Good idea. So I, I also wanted to mention our music tonight is going right. to be from Brittany Ballman and Anna Fultz, also mm -hmm. from... Church. <laughs> there, I, I feel like She's once, once I get like a Hope Church kind of night going on, I'm like, well, let's get another one. In. Let's get another one. In. So anyway, they're amazing and they will bless you so much. Mm -hmm. um, such ta not just talent, you know, in their music, but also just anointed. Yes. So they have such an anointing on their voice. And so I'm just excited for them to be able to share in song. Yes, as definitely. Well. So um, I'm going to read our scripture, and it's a few verses. Um, it comes from Philippians, but I thought this was fitting because tonight we're going to be talking a little bit about friendship, and um, I just thought this was a perfect right. scripture she for our topic tonight. Oh. <laughs> I have to wear them so I can see. Um, it comes from Philippians 2, 2 through 5, and it says, So I'm asking you, my friends, that you be joined together in perfect unity with one heart, one passion and united in one love. Walk together with harmonious purpose and you will fill my heart with unbound joy. <clears throat> Be free from pride-filled opinions for they will only harm your cherished unity. Don't allow self-promotion to hide in your hearts but in authentic humility put others first and view others as more important than yourselves. Mm -hmm. Abandon every display of selfishness Possess a greater concern for what matters to others instead of your own interest. And consider the example that Jesus, the anointed one, has set before us. Let his mindset become your motivation. Mm -hmm. Wow. Mm -hmm. you got to preach now. <laughs> I just, I, I love this. And you know, what makes it even more special is that I see the three of you walk this out in just your everyday life. Mm -hmm. And... Um, so that's why I really wanted to share it is it's just fitting for the topic, the show, and fitting for you guys. You guys are, you walk out just such special friendships and, and all of those that are in your life. And so thank you for being a Philippians yes. 2 friend. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, cry. Ooh, <laughs> I, know. I wanted to, um, you know, talk about just in our ladies' nights, we like to just kind of be practical and have fun and, mm -hmm. you know, laugh and enjoy, you know, tips from each other. But one of the things we were talking about was it being a new season, especially, you know, Mom, I'm all grown up now. <laughs> <laughs> Even though you still call me baby sometimes. Mm -hmm. um, well, but I you wrote know, a song about growing up. You remember. did, you did. Mm -hmm. And it's, yeah. it's a tearjerker. It is. <laughs> oh, gosh. Uh, I can't hear that right now. Anyway, yeah, so I was like, we won't go into that. I said, go ahead, baby, and grow up. Yeah, and one of the, mm. is she puts her Barbies away today, and I was like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> Madison oh. put her Barbies away just, you know, about a year oh. ago. So. Wow. But, um, mm. How oh. old does that make me? <laughs> well, Joanna some, has one in high school now, so that's oh, like don't bring it on. No. <laughs> I know, I know. You've, you've had a big season change. Yes. But, Mm -hmm. I wanted to ask, what are just some small things practical in your life that when we, you know, come into a new season, whether it's our kids starting school or going, I know my sister just sent her second away to college, um, yeah. and now she's got three kids and only one at home. Yeah. So as we move into these seasons, what are some of the things just that practical every day that kind of whether it comforts us or it helps us get back into the groove of things in the more fast paced routine. I know that I love a break, but I also thrive on routine. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. Logan, what do you what do you do that kinda just sets you back into that routine? Because you still have two young boys. I still have two. My oldest is thirteen and so and then my youngest is in fourth grade, so he's nine. Um, I feel like, you know, summer comes to an end. This year as our kids get older, I think you're kind of just 
they're first of all they're they're more fun like on their own you can actually go do stuff we took one of you're our not kids. wishing for them to go back to school so soon not as much like we were we really enjoyed the time off this summer and um also my kids don't wake up at 6 30 in the morning anymore in the summer they've started to learn the value of sleeping in <laughs> which means that because i work on all sorts of random schedules and so that means i also get to sleep in which was really delightful um this summer and so <laughs> My alarm clock, when it started going off to start school back again, no. I mean, y'all, it came early. It was real early. So Tony said, bring something if it helps you get your life back started. I brought my favorite mug with my L. <laughs> Did you give me this mug? I feel Maybe. like you, I feel like you might have given me this mug. Like mug. Like that yeah, mug. This is my, one of my too. favorite mugs. I, it's so favorite that I actually rewash it and use it every day. Mm. But also, I live in a tiny house right now, so um, like an actual tiny house. So anyway, I got to start my morning with some coffee, mm -hmm. and so that kind of helps me get going. But um, I think so. Do too, you let your coffee go through the summer? No. Okay. But, <laughs> but it feels like I um, I enjoy it with a new sense of desperation. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> praying it works. In the anymore. summer, it's like oh, this is delightful, and then the fall when school starts back, you're like. Uh, it's where, like needed. Where is my coffee? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I need it. I need to have it. So I'll be driving down the road. It's probably a terrible idea holding my mug, you know, so I have to keep roll of paper towels in the yes. car too um, for those accidents that I have. But mm -hmm. um, I think something that, you know, that I really do appreciate about the season changing and getting back to fall and getting back to routine is I do feel like just my rhythms um, settle in a lot more, even though um, – you know, we're running around now. My, both of my boys play football and my husband coaches and then we got youth group and there's all these different things that you're kind of running from one thing to the next. And so um, I do appreciate how in some ways it allows me to have, I mean, honestly, my quiet times are more consistent during the school year because my kids' schedule right. is more mm -hmm. consistent. Mm -hmm. You know, just um, I think I'm, I'm talking more regularly with people at the same time. It's easier to sort of keep up friendships, I think during the school year yeah. when people are traveling or doing this or that or gone or everybody thrives yeah. off of routine I like agree. things just mm -hmm, seem to fall into place because i'm not getting a whole bunch of quiet time because i'm sleeping in mm -hmm. yeah well, and as even, well even if you think you don't thrive off of routine you still do. You still do. Right. I know for me, I, I really like to fly by the seat of my pants. And I like to just blow where the wind takes me. Fly high but it's not that I might have said that wrong because I do that. I, so, I know what you're saying. Thank you. I know what you're saying. You know, I say all the sayings wrong. So, so do I. Me too. Just know what I'm trying to say by the inflection of my voice, okay? Yes. <laughs> so I think, though, for me, I really thrive off a schedule. My kids do too, and I've seen that. Mm -hmm. That it's very, very important for me to let them know what's going to happen, mm -hmm. just like. It's important for me. It's good for me to have things to look forward to. Mm -hmm. And so for us, it's, I mean, and it goes against every bone in my body, but having a chalkboard up on the wall in the kitchen that says, this is what's going on for dinner each night mm -hmm. and having a plan. And that's one less thing I have to think about. Mm -hmm. This is what we're having Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. <laughs> we're going to, you know, grandma's house on this night. And so, but that helps a ton with, that's just one And your kids, thing. they like that too, probably. Yes. They do. I have to tell a funny story. <laughs> so growing up, <laughs> mom and dad, they just ministered a lot. Okay? They were busy ministering. So she was the pastor's wife. She was the worship leader. And of course, like, you know, a mom too. Um, so when we lived in Savannah, she made dinner and she made sloppy joes. Mm -hmm. Well, I was like you and I love to just put a menu together and this is what we're going to eat every night and like I was just that girl that like I just wanted to write something down and make a make a chart or something mm -hmm. so then she made sloppy joes I was like Monday night sloppy joes and she apparently made a lot of it because <laughs> Tuesday did. night <laughs> sloppy joes <laughs> Wednesday night oh, sloppy <laughs> It became a joke, and the menu, like, we would be like, what's for dinner? And we'd go, so love you, too. You know, I used to make a lot of spaghetti, because, you know, you can make a lot yeah. of that. You, you just use your leftover sloppy joes and put yeah, it on noodles, right. didn't you? 
<laughs> and my nephew came to the house one time. He said, uh, Aunt Mary, do you have any? He thought it was called that spaghetti that lasts all week. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. He said, do you have it's any of this spaghetti kind. that lasts all special week? Kind. I said, yeah, I do. <laughs> As a matter of fact. It lasts all month. <laughs> so, anyway. Hey, were you I on like it? I'll freeze it for you. Yes. Yes. I, I like walking in and seeing, you know, I maybe prefer a couple different items on the menu. Mm -hmm. but Always. <laughs> Sloppy Joe's always. It's a hot meal. It's a hot meal. It's a hot meal. That's right. And it's not five o'clock. I'm like, oh, what's for dinner tonight? Oh, I know. That's the worst. Oh, it gets me as I'll freeze it and then throw it away for the freezer. Yes. Yes. I found that even in this just new season, that if I can think through on Sunday, just pick two or three meals. Yeah. Make mm -hmm. a little extra mm -hmm. and have a couple leftovers a couple nights, yeah. and then we do whatever on Friday. Like that makes me. Breathe. I felt like mm -hmm. when the first day of school started, I went to bed with such peace. Like mm -hmm. I always have this anxiety of, oh my God, we got to get up early. I got to get up at 6.30. <laughs> I haven't seen it all summer. And like I'm nervous <laughs> and the kid's going to get up, whatever. But I just went to bed with such peace, mm -hmm. no anxiety. And mm -hmm. it's just felt good and knowing like I got a plan mm -hmm. for the week. And if I don't have a plan, we're all going to live. It's going to be fine. We're all going right. to live. And so I'm trying to walk yeah. into this year with just, you know, I used to come home stickler like, why aren't they in the bed? <laughs> but I'm just not, I'm going to try not to sweat the Good little things you, this year. Mm -hmm. Yes. Good for you. <laughs> I'm going to bed before my kids sometimes. And I'm like, did they tuck you just in? Just get in bed. I don't care what you yes. want. My yeah. kids tucked me in last night. So y'all going to have to sing me to to me tonight. I know. I'm like, I'm I don't care what time. Out. Just, you better get up. Well, Joanna, let her share yes, a little. Yes, share oh, a little. Well, I, I, I love routine, but I'm terrible at implementing it. But, um, but I do think a hot meal is important at the table as a family, especially since my oldest is in a sport. And then my sec, my bottom one, he, my youngest, he just started soccer. So I have two going in opposite directions. And my middle ones are just kind of along for the ride. So I feel like around the dinner table is our only time at mm -hmm. night to kind of come together, talk through our days, and then everybody goes to bed, to mm -hmm. homework. And, um, and then for myself, because it has been, like you said, a big transition year for myself, my oldest started high school, and then I had been homeschooling for the last four years. And so I put my, my two boys, who's eight, in kindergarten back in school. So I have one at home, and I'm thankful mm -hmm. she's here somewhere in the studio <laughs> with me. But um, that has been huge. It was a weight lifted, but it was also kind of like that empty heart to mm -hmm. not have my babies with mm -hmm. me. So mm -hmm. I cope by doing projects, mm -hmm. and I'm tackling <laughs> my house like crazy. I just put down a floor in my basement. I've painted my... Um, my chimney and fireplace in my basement. I'm gonna be painting this week, so I'm gonna have a brand new, brand new house that this time next good. month. Nice. That's my plan. <laughs> That's good. good. That's what I do. Well, you know, I think what's comfort. important is just that we do things that do bring us peace, relieve stress, and that puts our whole family right. at peace. Yeah. You mm -hmm. know, when we move yes. into new seasons, whether it's a new season of life or a new just season of the year. So, well, before we continue, um, we're gonna have Brittany Bauman sing "Drawn." to you and you're going to love it.
Thank you, Brittany, for that beautiful song um, and beautiful voice. What an anointed voice that she has. She does. If you're just joining us, it is Ladies' Night, yes. and we've got three wonderful women here with us, Joanna Butler, Logan Wolfram, and Katie Mize. And if you're wondering, why do they have cake on the table there? <laughs> today, and why is it cut? It is, yeah, well, we did. there was we a, did a little it bit eaten. Yes, yeah, mm -hmm. so it's uh, Logan's birthday, so we wanted to just celebrate her and I wanted to you were talking about your boys when we were talking earlier um Walker and Hudson and I wanted to show a picture so if we can put Logan's family I had no up. idea what picture you pulled off y'all I went and like oh, that's <laughs> a good one I, I know I was trying to find that one that card actually year, was so. more recent for you guys so um I thought where is that that is up near um Highlands North Carolina Okay, so, that's so pretty. So, so, so pretty. One of my favorite areas. So yeah, Walker is your here. oldest, and Hudson is yeah. your youngest. Yeah. So. He always looks like he's being super cool because he has those transition lenses. Oh yeah. <laughs> 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 so like dark. My dad always had those. I'm like, what are you? And, it, and then he got to where he wears sunglasses all the oh. time and, and inside. So. Everyone looks so nice, and then his glasses are always. Wait till y'all get his old. Cute little eyes. <laughs> Well, one of the things, like we were talking about friendship earlier, and friendship is so important to me. It always has yes. been. I love fostering friendships. I've kind of said before, like, what a neat job. Like, if you did, like, what you love and you got paid to, like, just go to lunch with friends and hang out with friends. And that would be <laughs> you know, that's your passion when mm -hmm. you, you enjoy getting, going yes. to work. Yes. Mm -hmm. So, um, Logan, you're such a great friend in practical ways, you know, and that's Thank one you. thing. I think sometimes we overthink what we can do with our friends or for our friends, and you've been such a good friend in such practical ways. And I wanted you to share what that looks like to our viewers, what that looks like for you. How have you been just a friend in a practical way to people around you and in your life? So you want me to just talk about why I'm such an awesome friend now? Well, <laughs> I want you to talk about what it looks like to love no, I know. in a practical <laughs> way. Um, so I think... You know, one thing that I do a lot, and all of you have been on this end of it, is, um, and, and we all actually do this for each other, um, I think the ministry of meals, I'll mm -hmm. call it. Um, That's true. I think that, you know, when you have, I had surgery this year in January, and um, I couldn't move my arm for weeks. And so I had people bringing me meals, and, um, you know, when you have a baby or you have a death in the family, I brought you dinner after your dad passed and um, I think those are times that are super obvious when people 
need something and you don't know what to do and so you think, oh, bring them a casserole. Um, I might suggest maybe everyone not bringing a casserole because then you have just like <laughs> a lot of casserole. Um, but I do think that as we were talking even earlier about trying to get back into the swing of things and having a meal together, you don't think about um, – how big of a deal it is to take somebody a meal. But when you take someone a meal, not only have you provided dinner for that night, you've saved them the prep time, you've saved them the cooking time, you've saved them to time the time that it would take for them to think about it, the time that it would take for them to go to the grocery store and get it, to get all of that home, to unload it. You know, you, you just don't think about how that one meal actually alleviates a significant amount of errands and, and we prep all did work talk and, about that, like... Yeah. Hot meal on the table, mm -hmm. menu, yeah. mm -hmm. sloppy joes. Like you I know. think it's a really big deal. <laughs> and is. so I've started, um, I like to cook a lot, and so that helps. But over the last several years, if I was making something that a lot of times would be easy, sloppy joes, spaghetti, mm -hmm. uh, tacos is one for us, and I know that it's easy to double it, a lot of times I will double it, and then I will even stick it in the freezer in case somebody needs a meal and I'm in a hurry and don't have time and I can pull that out and do it. Um, sometimes I'll just feel the Lord prompt me like, hey, double it. And so I'll be, be doubling a meal and we'll think, okay, God, does somebody need a meal today? Yeah. Um, because I think a lot of times it's not always the most obvious thing. It's not always that somebody had a baby or someone had a death. Sometimes mm -hmm. you have a really terrible week or, um, you may just have so much going on that you feel so overwhelmed or think how much an accountant would appreciate a dinner during tax season or, you know, a person that runs a shop would appreciate it during Christmas. Like that there's all of right. these different times that the people can feel overwhelmed by their life mm -hmm. and it's removing something. And so I don't know how many times I've been making a meal and been like, Lord, bring somebody to mind. And so um, my friend Martha is an example. One time I texted her at like five o'clock and said, hey, are you home? She said, yeah, and I said, I'm bringing you dinner. And she was like, what? And I said, I'm bringing you dinner. I was just praying for you. Felt like the Lord said, bring you dinner. I'll be there in five minutes. She said, okay. Well, I get there. One of her girls has the flu. One of them has mono. She's a teacher. Mm. She was like in tears when I got there. And so that one meal meant so much to her. Right. And so three weeks later, I was doing the same thing. I'm like, Lord, bring someone to mind. Well, Martha comes to mind again. I'm like, Lord, I just took Martha a yeah. meal. <laughs> like, Martha has been on the gravy train with the meals lately. But I called her. Turned out she had the flu. She'd been sick in the bed. Y'all had made chicken and rice. Like, it was just this comfort thing. And so it's just, I think that it's a way that you can. Something easy when you're yeah. already, you know. When you're already doing it, just. Yeah. Double it. Stick it in your freezer or just pray and ask the Lord, like, who can I bless with this today? Mm -hmm. um, and so I think that is a really super practical thing. And, and even, like, if you're not someone who cooks, you can still do that. You can just be like, hey, I can pick up a rotisserie on the right. side. Like, Publix right. and Lowe's have those, like, kits and stuff yeah. now where you can just, yeah. Harris Teeter, I think, does it too, where you can just go in and mm -hmm. put the well, stuff I was together. at the grocery store the other day and didn't realize how much I was putting in my shopping cart, but... And all of a sudden, I had this thought, how am I going to get these in the house? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm not kidding y'all. You know, yes, I'm used, I'm used yes. to my husband mm -hmm. running to the car mm -hmm. and getting them all in, but now I have to take them in. So it's I'm a just, workout. You need that it's app, a workout. that grocery app, where they just, you sure. tell them what's oh, yeah. you drop them at the door. door. They deliver <laughs> them to you. But I go in there for one or two items, and you know how you Come leave. Out, like, uh, yes. like the Target knowledge Well, section. I just need to stay home, I think, <laughs> mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. wait on that meal you're going to bring. <laughs> Sloppy Joe's. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you do it, Now you do it. She can be playing Bring Me to Logan's Mom today. Bring me. Yeah. Yes. What makes for a good friend to you? Oh, man. Well, these gals are some of my very dearest. And so um, I think there's just a knowing that they care about me um, and want to call out the gold in me. Um, every single one of these ladies has heard me complain about something, but at the end of my complaining, every single one of them is like, okay, now what are we gonna do about it? What does the Lord say about this? Or um, I think that there's an accountability that's there with all of them. Um, we've all pretty much like had disagreements and been able to work through them because the friendship matters to us more at the end of the day mm -hmm. than um, being right. And so, um, you know, knowing that in a jam, I can call one of them, you know, I'll put these 
kind of friends on my emergency forms mm -hmm. for school mm -hmm. or, mm -hmm. you know, even as we were talking about um, getting back into the schedule with schools and um, I was talking with, with somebody, I think yesterday, or with some of y'all <laughs> yesterday, mm -hmm. and we were talking about one, once your kids are going in different directions, I mean, if you didn't have friends, somebody might be sitting there waiting for forever, forgotten that side of the sports road. thing if you weren't doing some <laughs> carpools. And so I think so much of it is having each other's back, but also um, wanting to see me be the best version of myself. I think that is key, that I can be. being a good listener as a friend. Yes. And then also not jumping on the complain train, mm -hmm. but being an encourager. Sometimes I need them to. Yes. I like that. Sometimes you need them to jump on for two seconds. I just made up that. To just you just need to feel validated. I, know, yes. 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 Yeah, I like it. Complaint well, train. I've seen that, you know, misery loves company, but yeah. mm -hmm. sometimes friends need to hear truth. Yeah. And it doesn't always feel good to no, hear it, but I feel like that's the best friend that can speak truth and encourage you, mm -hmm. make you feel better. Let it, let you get it out, but make you feel better. Mm -hmm. Um, it's you a know, validation, don't yes. you think? It's yeah. like you can validate Absolutely. someone without really actually jumping on the train right. and right. like going down that right. road that nobody needs to go on down. It's seeing but, someone, so, like yeah. it's to see someone, to hear them and see them. And say so you have love real reasons to feel, this, to feel way, this way. But what does the word say about it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, I've gone through something in just this past week and I've complained and, you know, cried out and, my mom and my sister are sending me scriptures. Mm -hmm. This is what the word says. This is what we know is true. Yeah. Yeah. But I did want, we've got a few more minutes that um, before we are going to have um, Anna sing. But you've gone through a waiting period in this last a little more than a year. Two. And I wanted to <laughs> yes, <laughs> Two years. ask you, what's the Lord showing you about his truth during this waiting mm -hmm. period that you've been in? Um, we have. We've been in kind of a waiting period and also just like a, a period that has felt like we've been under actually a lot of attack in a lot of ways. Um, and I think the thing that kind of I keep going back to is that God is good even mm -hmm. if my life doesn't feel good right now. Um, that there's things that are hard or things that are difficult and to just continue to cry out to the Lord even when I don't feel it all the time. You know, I remember... Um, over mm -hmm. a year ago, we're renovating a house right now, and it's not gone like we thought it was going to. But um, I remember when they took the roof off of the house at one point, and I was looking at it and standing outside, and the roof is gone. And I remember thinking, like, Lord, you've been really quiet for a while. Like, why have I not been able to hear you? I need you to speak into my life right now. What is the deal? And, um, and I'm standing, and I'm looking at this house, and there's, like, the roof in the front yard. And I felt like the Lord said, um, sometimes you have to gut the whole thing so it can stand the test of time. And so I feel like that that has been the season that we've been in, um, is feeling just gutted, um, but also knowing that God is good. And, and I was telling um, a friend and mentor about this, you know, not long after that, and, and I was telling her this whole story, and she said to me, I was like, it's so weird, the house just didn't have a roof, like it looked like a shoebox that you took the lid off of. And she said, Logan, all I can hear over and over as you're telling me this story is that um, the sky's the limit when there's no ceiling, mm -hmm. you know, and okay. trusting that our God is good and he is big mm -hmm. and he is bigger than um, the circumstances that we're under. Mm -hmm. and, um, and so then I'm just contending with the Lord, continuing over this last year to just say, Lord, what in the world? And I felt like he said, too, sometimes you cannot hear a still small voice over the sounds of demolition. And so when things are feeling wrecked a lot of times, if we don't get quiet and sit before the Lord, um, we are not going to hear the things that he is yeah. saying to us. Because when you're trying to wade yeah, through good. a lot of wreckage, um, it's loud, you know? I mean, imagine walking through, like, what feels like a war zone. You're, like, crunching on things and knocking things, and it's just not quiet. And that's good. So, um, so that's really something that I feel like that God keeps teaching me is that I have to just stay in the word um, even when I don't feel like it and believe. That's what faith is. It's believing without seeing right. and continue to believe that, to declare that. And all of you guys have <coughs> continued to remind me of those things in these hard seasons. And I think having relationships and people that will walk alongside of you and share that kind of stuff with you um, and hold you up and hold you accountable is 
That's kind good. of a big deal. So yes, I love that. Good. Just taking the time to have mm -hmm. your own quiet time with him. That's when you're going to hear his voice. Yes. Simple but true. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, we're going to have Anna Foltz sing Build My Life.
Thank you, Anna. Another beautiful voice. <laughs> yes. I remember when I first mm -hmm. heard her sing at church, um, I was worshiping, and then I went, we got to have her on the show. <laughs> 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 she has such a sweet, sweet voice when she sings. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, well, we're going to transition here and talk a little bit still about friendship with Joanna. Joanna, I know friendship is important to you, and you've been... Um, a friend, like tried and true, through all the transitions of our lives and different seasons. That some seasons we've had to where we've seen each other more, and others were few and far between. But I've appreciated that we've always been able to keep in touch. Mm -hmm. And if it went for a longer amount of time, there was no worries on either end um, of feeling bad. Like we just knew that it was a different season, and mm -hmm. we pick up where we left mm -hmm. off. And We'd always go get sushi. Supply. Yes. <laughs> We'd always yes. hit up the sushi Get places. sushi. We'd mm -hmm. go have sushi together or just reconnect. And yes. every time Brad and I have dinner with you guys, we walk away just like, gosh, I really just love them. Like, <laughs> you know? So anyway, I appreciate mm -hmm. your friendship and just always being there. And I have to say you're a great listener, too. Mm -hmm. Great listener. So... Um, and I know that friendship mm -hmm. is really important to you, and you're a mom of four. You shared, we have mm -hmm. a picture of you and Rich and uh, your beautiful children that I um, scouted off of Facebook. There, yeah, oh, <laughs> there it is. That's okay. a good mm -hmm. Listen, I got y'all yes, covered. Y'all don't have to worry. It's not like a selfie. Look at or... <laughs> look at us, he is good looking. Wow, and all he those is. beautiful children. I know. And look Super how young she sweet. looks. Right? I, I, so, your I oldest, that. Ella Tays, in high yes. school, and then you've got. Mm -hmm. Mary Ellis and Mac oh, and Cam. So, I know this beautiful is last picture. Year. You're yeah. a busy woman. <laughs> yes, they also. Busy. They keep um, busy. I can give you some good rest. <laughs> yes, <laughs> please. I need it. They, they have been begging for sloppy joe. She got a sloppy joe recipe. You're going to have to put your sloppy joe recipe <laughs> on, on the Facebook. We're going to put it on the Facebook. Yes. Listen. Call all doctor it up. Make call it look yes. like I was something. Man witch. <laughs> <laughs> and a can opener. <laughs> <laughs> well, with your busy life, mm -hmm. mom, pastor, you know, I know your kids are involved in sports, you yes. know, making time for friends. How do you make time for friends, and, and why do you think that friendship is so important? Well, I, I grew up in ministry. My mom was a pastor's wife, and so oh. I grew up seeing my mom illustrate this and implement it in our family um, she always had time to make a meal and invite friends over. And, and our house was a great size home, but it wasn't extravagant. It wasn't big. It was enough for our family, but she never was afraid to have lots of people in and out of the house. And I, I just picked up on that and realized, like, it's better to have people in your home and enjoy them, no matter how many people it would be, to never have the excuse that, when I get to a bigger home or when I do X, Y, and Z to this house, I'll have people in. That was something that I never heard my mom say. She just hosted and welcomed people in um, unexpectedly. She always had coffee made, and that's something I love to do is just have coffee ready and available because there's something about conversing over a cup of coffee or over a meal. It really does bring you together. And so those are just a few things that I always have ready in the back of my mind, but I do love to host. I love to have big gatherings at Thanksgiving or in the summer. I try to find special occasions to have lots of people, and the more the merrier. I don't like to shut it down. I don't like to have cutoffs. These, these ladies all know I can't say no. I'm like, I no, know. just come on. Just I've come on. There's room. Mm -hmm. when, There's room you had my some of, when I met you and you had some of your, you know, different things that you do throughout the year, I was like, I've met my match. <laughs> <laughs> she does this as well, and you do it so well. Thank so. you. Now, Tony is the queen mm. of that, we know. She is. Mm -hmm. She is. I'm telling you, I, I said, what group of friends are you going out with tonight? You know? <laughs> but mm -hmm. why do you think it's important that you have friends? Um, I think it's important for myself because I don't think the Lord ever designed us to be alone. I think it's, exactly. he made life to exist within community, to exist within friendship. I mean, he is a triune God. So there's three in one. And, and with that, in the same way, we function best when we function together. Mm -hmm. And, um, 
So for myself, because I am an extrovert, I do love to be with people. And I, I used to think that was an insecurity on myself, like, why do I not want to be alone? But I think God designed me specifically to enjoy having fellowship along the way, mm -hmm. whatever I'm doing, whether it is a project, and these ladies have helped me many <laughs> times with projects, <clears throat> or having a dinner party, but having friends help me with it, or just going to the grocery store. I really don't mind taking one of my kids, not all, but <laughs> maybe one, and just enjoy that company. Because as you're going and communicating with someone, there's a bond that you create. You begin to talk about things you wouldn't necessarily mm -hmm. be prepared for with your kids or a happy accident kind of conversation where you hear more of who they are and what they're thinking about. I mean, one of the things that I love to do is ask my kids, like, what are you thinking about? Just to kind of hear their mm -hmm. process. And in mm -hmm. the same way with friendships, what, what's going on? What, what are you thinking about lately? What's on your mind? And I find that I come alive as I share life with others. Mm -hmm. Well, even going further than that, just the family, there's a community, isn't there? Mm -hmm. And I know being a pastor's wife, you, you have to be a part of the community. Why do you think community is so important? Again, I think that we were never designed to be alone. Mm -hmm. And in the same way, we are to bear with one another each other's burdens and so when you're not in community the one thing that I find all the time in leadership why some people will leave a church or not be happy in their church is that they can't find community That's they good. can't find mm -hmm. friendships they haven't done this and and there are a couple of reasons why but I have found that people long to be connected mm -hmm. that when they're connected there's joy there is a satisfaction deep in your soul that somebody knows me mm -hmm. that I'm not just another face in the crowd I know it's so important even so much that when my daughter when we started attending the church that we are part of now she was quite young and we had been a couple of weeks and um, one Sunday, we got in the car to leave to come home, and she was so happy. And I was like, what? How was your day? And she said, they remembered my name. Mm -hmm. And it was such a big deal to a nine-year-old. But is. how much is it for mm -hmm. us to mm -hmm. know that our name is being remembered? Mm -hmm. That when someone walks through the mm -hmm. doors of the church and you say, hello, so-and-so, it's good to see you. Like, there, there's an expression on their face, and I'll never forget, and I've learned mm -hmm to get to know people because immediately they feel like I belong mm -hmm. and we all want to belong. So at my table, you belong. In my home, you belong. At our church, you belong because that's how community is made is then you realize I belong somewhere and in this place I can contribute and I can receive. Mm -hmm. I think that shows very well yes. the personality and the character of you and Rich mm -hmm. and it overflows into Hope Church mm -hmm. yes. because so many times I hear people come in, it's their first time. I walked in, everyone was so friendly, and I felt like I was a home. Mm -hmm. I felt like it was family. And I think that all starts at the top. Mm -hmm. And so that's just a great example of what you do in your home, and it's overflowing yes. out of that in your ministry. Thank so. you. I love that. Well, that makes me kind of <laughs> <laughs> I cry a lot. I don't know. Mm -hmm. I mean, I know I yes. say that. Do they know? We, we cried all the movies. <laughs> yes. We'd be like, why are y'all crying at that? <laughs> oh well, um, we're going to go to another song with Brittany and Anna, and this is sweet because the two of them are singing together, but it's Nothing But the Blood of Jesus. Yes.
Well, we've been talking about friendships tonight. I know it's something that's really important to me, and I think um, mm -hmm. with women, I think it's important for men too, you know, to have oh. good mm -hmm. male Christian friends in their life. But um, through all the years of friendships, um, whether you're in ministry or just you're just living life, at some point you've been offended. And I wanted to talk about how we deal with offenses as followers of Christ. And I wanted to talk to you, Joanna, since in all the years of ministry that you've been in, um, I'm sure that you've been offended and someone you've offended someone else. Mm -hmm. And I just want to talk about how do you walk <laughs> through that? I mean, how do you keep friendships and walk through that? I think you do it carefully. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I think for myself, having been offended, I always have to just continue to bring it back to the Lord. Just in Scripture where he talks about forgiving, you know, his disciples are like, how many times do I have to forgive? And you know, he says 70 times 7. And, and in essence, I think that really means you forgive and you forgive and you forgive until really it is lifted. And there have been seasons in my life that I've had to live by that scripture today. I choose to forgive. And it is a choice. It is a choice to be offended, and it's a choice to forgive. Right. And um, my 10-year-old, honestly, is the greatest at being an example of what it looks like to walk in forgiveness. She was hurt. This was months and months ago. And I was just saying, well, you know, I'm so sorry that they hurt you. And she said, she said, Mom... It's a choice, and they don't mm. have power over me. It's a mm. choice for me to be hurt by them. Mm. And it was just this instant Holy Spirit moment of like, listen to this, mm -hmm. because this is the truth. She chose to walk in love and forgiveness. And I think that's the key is to walk in love and keeping a short record of wrongs. Mm. And that's so important in life and friendship I mean, we've all been friends a very long time, and there are going to be issues that stem up. There are going to be hard conversations. But if you can't recognize that love covers a multitude of sin, then the, then the friendships really can die. Mm -hmm. And I don't think that's God's design. His design for us is to love and walk it out. Oh, I think that's well said, you know, just to love and forgive yes. over and over until it's lifted. I like mm -hmm. what you said there, until you just feel that weight off because only the love of the Lord, you know, love always wins. Mm -hmm. And always. so I think in, when we can walk in love. So I know you may have a ton of friends. You may have one friend. You may have been offended and you're not sure where to go with that friendship. I just wanted to ask Joanna if you would pray <clears throat> over um, anyone out there that's mm -hmm. struggled with that, if you would just pray to. that over them. Mm -hmm. Father, we thank you so much for community and friendship that you designed it. It was never our design in the first place. It was your thought before you ever even created the world. You were already in community. And so, Lord, I thank you for the people who are listening today and who are watching. I ask that you would begin to speak to them and remind them of places where they may have been offended, where they may have offended someone, that they would go to those that they've offended and make things right. Or if they have been personally wounded, I ask that they would begin to release forgiveness, that when we release forgiveness, we ourselves become free. So I ask right now that you would just begin to move on people's hearts, that they would see you in this process and release love and truth into those wounds and those places of darkness where the enemy loves to hold us. I ask that your peace that surpasses all understanding.